Okay, let's get started, please. So um, remember, we're in the middle of something. Um, uh, so uh, we we're talking about um, I think we're in section three point one. Uh, we're talking about functions, right? And so functions, remember, are these things that um, you have a set of, of things, and then you have another set of things. I mean, for us, it's mainly going to be numbers. It's, you know, you've got a set of numbers, and then you map, um, you map you know, for, every, for every element in this set, there's a, there's a corresponding element over here uh, in this set. Right? So A gets mapped to F of A. So for example, you, know, um, right, you could have the um, F of X equals X squared function. Right. So over here would be your your domain. Right. So the the thing on the left is called the domain. The thing on the right is called the range. Right. The the set you map from is called the domain. The set you, set you map into is called the range. Right. So for the squaring function, right, the domain uh, you could take as the domain the entire real line, and then um, you could think of the range also as the real line. Right. To every to every point, right? So, so if I have negative one over here, right? It gets mapped to um, f of negative one, right? Which is uh, which is negative one squared, aka one, right? So, the, this negative one here gets mapped gets mapped to one, right? Zero gets mapped to to zero, one gets mapped to one, and, and so on and so forth, right? Okay. So everybody. Right. These are what this is what this is one way of visualizing a function, right? It's a it's you've got the set on the left, you've got the set on the right, and then you you have these sort of arrows showing where where every where every element goes. Okay, that's um, you know that's a kind of inefficient way of, of drawing a function, right? Because then you for every element here you have to draw arrows, right? Um, that's not usually how we represent a function. Um, okay, so we were talking about. Um, the idea of image. Okay. So anybody remember what image was? Can anybody tell me what an image is? Don't look at your notes. <laughs> anybody? What's an what's the image of a function? Image of a function. This is where we stopped last time. Anybody? It just went by here. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I have almost zero memory at this point. In two weeks, I'll not know who you are. After after this semester ends, I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. It's it's. I was just talking with somebody yesterday. I think. I hope this is not true, but it seems like there's some sort of like limit on your memory, like a human memory. And so I was talking to somebody. I'm in my fifties now. Um, you know, this other person, probably in her late 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 fifties, she said the same thing. Like, you used to have an amazing memory, but now it's like the memory is full, and you can't empty the memory. Um, yeah, so it's kind of frightening. Learn learn stuff while you can. <laughs> learn stuff while your your brains are still plastic. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> image of the function. Anybody? Image of the function is basically the collection of outputs. The uh, set of outputs of, of the function. Okay, so, uh, right, so in this case, the image of the function wouldn't be the whole real line, right? Because we can't get things like negative one. Uh, I mean, you, you can if you use complex numbers, but if you're using real inputs, you can't get uh, negative numbers. You can't get negative numbers out of the squaring function. Right, so this, for, so for this example here, the image of f, the image of the squaring function, is the positive reals. Right, so I'm sorry, non-negative reals. Right, you can get zero. Right, so it's from zero, zero to infinity. Okay, is that distinction clear? What between the image and the range? Okay, the range is just what you map into. Right, what you map into. And the, the image is the actual things you get out. OK, is that, is that clear? Right. So if you want to write this mathematically, right, if I have some function f going from 
A to B, then the image of F, the image of F, sorry, image of F is everything that looks like F of A, right? It's the collection of all F of A's, right? It's all the outputs as the A run over, as the little A's run over your domain, right? So in English, this is the set of all F of A as little a ranges over big A. Okay, and I'm going to go a little quickly now because we did this example last time. So here's the example we were finishing up with. Um, we had this function, f of x is 1 minus x over x. Um, uh, what's the domain? What kind of f's, what kind of x's can you put into this guy? Anything, anything but zero. So the real numbers, but not zero. Okay, and then the range, you know, range is kind of. Let's just say you get real numbers out of it. Okay, so you can just say the things you get out are numbers. The range is kind of a uh, imprecise term. Okay, like we could we over here we could have said the range is zero and is is the positive is the non-negative reals. That would also also be a valid way to say the range, right? You could have said it's just it's just a set that contains the image. Okay, so range is range is not that well defined, but image is is very precise. So R. What we, were, what we were doing last, at the end last time was um, uh, trying to figure out what, the Im what exactly the image is. Okay. Um, right. What exactly is the image? And so we, I started with some questions like, is, is 2 in the image? Is 2 in the image? Like, can you get a 2 out of this? Right. Can you get, is there an x? Right. Is there an x? Uh, such that f of x equals 2, right? Can you get a 2 as an output? And we figured it out, right? We said, okay, well, look, this would have to be equal to 2, right? So that's the same thing as saying that 1 minus x equals 2x. That's the same thing as saying that 1 equals 3x. That's the same thing as saying that x is a third, right? So yeah, you can get a 2 out of this, right? If we plug it back in, Right, one minus a third over a third is two thirds over one third, which is two. Right, right. Yeah, you can get a two out of it. So two is in the image. Right, um, is three in the image? Is three in the image? Well, you can do the same thing. 1 minus x over x equals 3. Um, you got 1 minus x equals 3x. Uh, 1 equals 4x. So x is equal to 5. Right? So yeah, four, 3 is, yes, 3. You can get a 3. Right? Um, is pi in the image? Is pi in the image? Well, you do the same thing. Uh, 1 minus x equals pi x. 1 minus 1 equals pi plus 1 x. So you get x is going to be 1 over pi plus 1. Right. Okay. Right. So, um, so we don't want to keep on doing this, <laughs> right? Because there's an infinite number of things that we have to try. Right. So instead of instead of Continuing in this way, what we say is is y, and we let y be any number. Okay, is y in the image? And you just do the same thing that we did. Okay, and then you see what what constraints show up for y. So you say, okay, is y in the image? Well, you'd have to have um, the you would one minus x over x would be y. That means one minus x is y x. That means that um, 1 is equal to you know, 1 plus y 
x. That means that x will have to be 1 over 1 plus y. Let me just make sure that um, everybody's okay. So I move this. I move this to the other side. I get one is equal to x plus y x, and then I distribute out the x. So I get one plus y times x, and then I divide through by divide through by by one plus y. Okay. So. Um, yeah, and then you, um, if you put that in, so you can you can get y by putting in putting in one over one plus y, right? If we feed that into the thing, right, we get one minus one over one plus y over one plus y, right? We multiply top and bottom by uh, 1 plus y. So again, we multiply by 1, as we've done so many times before. Distribute, we get 1 plus y, we get minus 1, we get 1 on the bottom. And so we get y. Right. So if, if, as long as we put in this 1 over 1 plus y, we're going to get y. Just like, right? To get a three, we put in one over three plus one, you know, one plus three. To get a two, we put in uh, one over uh, two plus one. Right? To get to get y, we put in one over one plus y. Okay. So yeah, we can get any y. That's not true. We can't get any y. We can't get negative one. Right? We can't get negative one because to do so, we need to put in one over zero which doesn't make any sense. Okay, so that tells us that we can get, we in fact can get any y except for uh, negative one. Okay, and that's how you figure out the, that's how you figure out the image. Okay, right? You say, uh, you, you try to solve, solve this, right? You've got your function f of x equals one minus x over x. You say, can I, can I get an arbitrary y? And then you figure out what kind of x you would need and see um, what constraints that puts on the y. Okay. So that so so we figure out is that the image is uh, all of R but not negative one. Okay. So we can get any number except for negative. Let me have you do an example. Let me have you do an exercise. Let's see if this is uh, uh, sinking in. So here it is. f of x is um, x plus 2 over x minus 3. And uh, uh, you can see immediately that the domain is everything but 3. Oops. Right. Everything but 3. And I want you to figure out the image. Okay. So same same procedure, right? So uh, uh, set f of x equal to y. Solve for x. Solve to find uh, the x needed to get y, and see what constraints. on y up here.
Okay, turn to somebody nearby and talk with them, even if even if it's not going well. Okay, I hear people lamenting their algebra, algebra skills. Um, uh, so, what do we do? We set this equal to y and we see what x is needed, right? What x solves this, right? What x solves this? Right? Okay, so what should we do? We need, we need to solve for x, right? So, Anybody? Yes, Can you multiply both sides by x minus Yes. That would be a good, good first move. Okay. So let's uh, let's multiply that out. We get um, we get y x, and we also get this three minus three y. And then we want to solve for x. Right, so how do we how do we isolate x? x? Anybody? We're gonna move. So you want you want to get x by itself, right? You want to get x by itself. Let's move everything involving x to one side, right? So let's have we have, we have this x minus y x here. And I'm going to move the 2 to the other side. So negative 3y minus 2 over here. Okay. So I'm just you know, you know, moving things from one side to the other. Okay. How can I get an x by itself here? Factor out the x. How can I get x by itself? Well, I'll divide by 1 minus 1. Right. So x, this tells me that x has to be negative 3y minus 2 over 1 minus 1. Okay. And so, yes? Do you mind just going over from the top of the half the x? Sure, sure. So this, you know, this x minus y, x minus yx, remember, um, the distributive property, right? That a times b plus c equals ab plus ac, right? Let me write it this way. x times b plus c equals xb plus xc. OK. So when I see this x, uh, x minus yx, uh, you know, secretly what it is is 1, one x minus yx. Right? It's one x minus y x, and so I can uh, I've got you know x times something plus x times something, right? So I can I can pull that x out, right? This is right. This is x times one. Well, I'm just going to leave it this way. One x minus y x, right? So I can pull that x out, and I've got one minus y. Wait, right? I've got one minus y times x. Okay, so it's just the distributive property. Thank you. Yes. Could you divide by y? Divide by? Mm -hmm. Divide by y instead of Divide the left side by y here at this point? You, you could, but you would get x over y minus x. And so you're kind of no nearer, no nearer to your isolated x than you were before. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if you divide it by y on this side, you have to divide by y on the other side too, right? So then that would. Put a y. It's it doesn't look like it's getting any simpler. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this if if you got this, you know, x minus y x uh, equals negative three y minus two. 
Yeah, you could multiply both sides by one over one. But that would give you this, again, by the distributed property, you'd get x over y minus x uh, equals negative 3 minus 2 over y. So it's, it'll work out in the end. But I think it's just, yeah, so yeah, you could do this. So you can say, OK, and then you're going to, then you're going to factor out the, um, the x, right? Right? And then you would divide by divide by this, divide by this thing. But it's and it, it will be equal, but it's just more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. It will work. It will work. Okay. In any case, um, what you see is that uh, the x that solves this is negative three minus negative three y minus two over one minus y. Right, and so. You can get any so you can get any y except for y equals one, right? So, um, right. So what this tells us that we can get can get any y as output, excluding y equals one, and if you want to, you can. You can test it out. Take this, take this x and plug it in there, and you'll see that you get out a y. Okay, that'll be a good al algebra practice for you guys. Okay. 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 I'm gonna. Okay, that's that's all I want to say about um, about finding the image. This this. Uh, skill is going to be come in handy later when we talk about inverse functions. Okay, we'll talk about these things called inverse functions, functions that reverse reverse um, the original function, um, uh, and that is going to be really crucial in this course. The concept of an in inverse function is really crucial in this course because when we talk about um, uh, when we when we talk about the logarithm function later on. The way we create it as an is as an inverse function. So anyway, so all this stuff builds up. So please, please be sure. Uh, you might be thinking like, oh, what's the point of this obscure, <laughs> this obscure little trick? Yeah, it, that's that's a reasonable thing to think. But in the course of in in the grand scheme of this course, the notion of 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 inverting a function is really crucial. So yeah, we we need the, we need. The, Okay. Okay. So um, let's go on to uh, three point two. So this is graphs of functions. Okay. So remember we did graphs of, of equations. We did graphs of equations, right? So what those were were like um, all points in the plane that uh, satisfied some equation, right? If you had, you know, like um, y equals x, right? Then the graph of that equation was all these points, right? All these points that satisfy well, the x coordinate equals the y coordinate, right? So everything where the x coordinate and the y coordinates were the same, right? So all points x, y where y and x were identical, right? Okay. So the notion of a graph of a, of a function is 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 pretty pretty similar. So um, the graph of a function. F um, uh, is the graph of the equation y equals f of x. Okay. 
Okay, so some examples, right? Uh, you know, if my function is f of x equals x, my function is f of x equals x, then the graph is um, the graph is just you know, the graph of so this corresponds to the graph of y equals x, right? You just look at the graph of y equals f of x. Well, f of x is x, so it's just the graph of y equals x, right? So we get exactly the same thing, right? This is the graph of graph of f of x equals x. Okay. People sometimes write that as graph of y equals f of x. And the thing to notice is, of course, that you know, for every point on the graph, you know, for every point on the graph, the y coordinate equals f of the x coordinate, right? For every point, um, for every point x y, uh, y equals f of x. Right? The y coordinate equals f of the x coordinate. Okay, so some examples, right? If I have f of x equals the absolute value of x, then uh, what's that going to look like? Well, um, right, all the y coordinates have to be the absolute value of the x coordinates, right? So what does that look like? Can anybody just tell me? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. Right, it's going to look like this. All the y coordinates are the are the absolute values of the x coordinates, right? So you've got one, right? You've got one comma one, but you've got negative one comma one, right? Because the y coordinate is going to be the absolute value of the x coordinate, right? The y coordinate one is going to be the absolute value of the x coordinate, right? One has to be, right? The y coordinate has to be the absolute value of the x coordinate, right? Zero, 0 is on the graph, right? 2, 2, right? Negative 2, 2, etc. Et okay. Second example, um, f of x equals, say, um, uh, x, x cubed. Anybody know what, what that graph looks like? Take a second, write, draw, draw something, write something down. Sketch the graph. Some of you, you know, may know this know this by heart. Okay. I mean, you can uh, these sorts of things. It's kind of you almost have to have seen them before to. To, to, to know, but you can you can sort of figure up figure them out, you know, by hand. You say, okay, well, if the x coordinate is one, then the y coordinate must be one. If the x coordinate is negative one, then the y coordinate must be negative one, because right, negative one cubed is negative one. Right. If the x coordinate is two, then the y coordinate has to be eight, right? So two, four, eight. Right. If the x coordinate is three, then the y coordinate must be twenty-seven, right? And so on and so forth. Right, and you know that this thing is symmetric. Um, this thing is is symmetric about the origin, right? Because if you put in negative x and negative y, um, you see that you get negative y equals negative x cubed, which is the same thing as y equals x cubed, right? So you you can play the symmetry game. And see that it's symmetric about the origin, so you know that um, that it's going to be a reflection. This part, whoops, this part is going to be a reflection. Like that. Okay. Um, 
I'll give you two to, two to think about. One, f of x equals one over x, and two, uh, f of x equals the square root of one minus x squared. The last one is the, is the hard You're in? Yeah. Do, do you need help with something? Oh, oh, I see. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, I'll go get some paper towels. Huh? So, uh, what is the first one? What does the first one look like? Does anybody just know know already? You've seen this before? Yes, uh, Meredith. Um, I'm not sure. I'm just going to plug in. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, so yeah, so at one half, yeah, so at, at when x is equal to one, when x is equal to one, you get a one. When x is equal to a half, you get a two. Yeah. When x is equal to a third, you get a three. When you get a fourth, you get a four, and so on and so forth. Right? So at one over n, you're gonna get the value of n. Right? So it goes up like this. Right? And similarly as you go out, right, uh, when you go to two, you're at a half. When you're at three, you're at a third. When you're at four, you're at a fourth, right? There's a kind of symmetry, right? There's a symmetry. In fact, it's this symmetry across the y equals x x line. Um, and similarly, you could do something over here like this. So yeah. Um, does anybody know what this looks like? Right. Y equals the square root of one minus x squared. This was the hard one. Anybody? Anybody figure it out? 
Yep. Well, if you square both sides, um, you see that y squared equals 1 minus x squared, which could be rewritten as x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Dun, 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 right? This is the circle. Right? So this is actually just the upper half of the circle, right? because you're taking the positive, you're taking the positive square root of 1 minus x squared. You don't get the full circle because that would be plus or minus, right? That would be plus or minus, and that would mean that you have two values for every x coordinate, right? So, um, right, uh, right, uh, so notice, um, you can't have, multiple uh, heights for a single x value. Right? The graph of the function can't have multiple heights for a single x, x value. So like, you couldn't have a graph of a function that looked like this, right? Because that would, what that would say was that that um, uh, this y is f of x, but this y, which is different, is also f of x, right? So you'd have f of x, right? Here's here's some x, and it, they would there would be four no five different values of of f of x, right? That's not a function. The function only associates one value with with one input, right? So you can't have something like this. Um, uh, right, it uh, must, the graph of a function must satisfy what's called the vertical line test. Okay. The vertical line test, meaning that uh, any vertical line should only hit one, one point on the graph, right? So vertical line test, um, any vertical line uh, can hit at most one point on the graph of a function. So, for example, this, this is not the graph of a function. Right? A circle is not a graph of a function because that would say that x of 0 is, right, if I have this thing, that would say that x of 0 is 1, but x of 0 is also negative 1. Right? I'm sorry, f of 0. So this would say f of 0 is 1, and f of 0 is also negative 1. So there'd be multiple values associated with, with, with one input, which is not what a function is. Yes? Can there be multiple x's for a y? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So you can, uh, like for the, for the absolute value function, right? It's, it's fine if you fail the horizontal line test, right? And it doesn't really matter, right? But all this would mean is that you know, for different x's, you have the same output, right? But you can't have, for same output, you've got different, for same input, you've got different outputs. That's not, that's not allowed. OK. Um, let me put up some, some, uh, some nice exercise. Let me have you do some kind of fun exercise. Uh, We'll make sure that you understand what's going on here. Um, so this is an exercise from the book. They have, they have, um, here's the graph of y equals x. Here's the graph of y equals the square root of x. Okay, so you've got the graph of the, you know, the identity function, and you've got the graph of the square root function. And you have this point here, 
that lies above uh, x equals 6. Okay. And they say, uh, go horizontally across until you hit here, and then go vertically down. So this is a right angle, go vertically down. Okay. So they'd like to know, they're calling these points P, Q, and R, and they'd like to know the coordinates of P, Q, and R. If you understand what you're doing, this should this should be not too bad. Let's do it. So what are the coordinates of P? Oh, what's the x coordinate of P? Six. Six, right? And you it's on the graph of y equals square root of x, right? So what's the y coordinate have to be? Square root of six, right? You know that the x coordinate is six, or the y coordinate has to be the square root of the x coordinate. Okay, okay so now let's walk over to here, right? What is the y coordinate here? Square root of six, right? You know that y coordinate is square root of six. So what's the x coordinate? Square root of six. Square root of six, right? Because the, because it's on this line, and y the x coordinate has to be equal to the y coordinate, right? So you know that this guy here is square root of six, square root of six. Okay. Okay. Now let's drop back down to the to the root here. What's so? What do you know about it immediately? The x coordinate is going to be square root of 6, right? Because right, it lies on this vertical line. So the x coordinate is square root of 6. What's the y coordinate? 6. So the y coordinate has to be the square root of the x coordinate. So it'll be anybody? What's the x coordinate? There, x coordinate is square root of 6, and we need the square root of that, right? So we take the square root of the square root of 6. Okay. Yes? Did you have, did, were you going to give the answer? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So this is kind of cool. And you see that if we kept on going, like, Going, going to this line and then dropping to the square root, drop, going to this line, dropping to the square root, we're gonna get, you know, we're gonna get things like the square root of the square root of six, comma the square root of the square root of the square root of six, and so on and so forth, right? It would just keep on going, piling up square roots on, onwards and onwards, until you get really close to this thing here, right? Which is one, comma one, right? Because as you take square roots of numbers, the more, you know, the, as you keep on going this in this way, you're gonna end up heading to 1. Right? If you've ever played with a calculator, taking a large number and just hit square root over, over and over, you see that it tends to 1. Right? 
Similarly, the same thing would happen with a smaller number, right? If you take a number smaller than one, and you just keep on taking square roots of it, it's gonna, it's gonna bounce, bounce, and bounce, and bounce, and end up towards heading towards one. Okay. Um, let me just uh, say one, one. There are a couple of things that I should, I should comment on. Um, uh, one is that so there's. This kind of problem will show up in, in the homework. It'll say, here's the graph of a function. Right? Here's the graph of the function. Uh, like, let's say that this is um, this is like negative five, this is like negative two, um, this is say four, and this is three. Okay. Here's the graph of a function. So graph of y equals f of x. And they're saying, what's the domain and range? What are the domain and range? And by range, they actually mean image. OK. So <clears throat> you look at it, and you say, OK, what are legitimate x values that you can put into this function? What's the, what's the interval of, of permissible x values here? Well, it looks like for negative 5, we get some value out, right? And we can, we can, get, um, we can get values out up until 3, but not including 3, right? So the domain is going to be negative 5 comma 3, right? And then if you look at the range, I mean the image, so you're looking at what kind of values do you, do you get out of it? Um, <clears throat> what kind of values do you get out of it? And you see that, well, OK, we get basically everything from negative 2 upwards to 4, right? Upwards to 4, but not including 4, right? So we get negative 2 to 4, but the 4 is not included. OK. OK, is that, is that clear? Kind of clear? Right. If, the way, one way you could think of this is you're sort of like taking a shadow. You're taking what's called a projection. So you like you flatten the whole thing on to find the x rate, x values. You just flatten the whole thing down, right? You take the shadow of, of this of this thing, and you see that you're going to get you're going to get this, right? And then similarly for the for the for the image, you're just going to flatten everything down here, and you see that you're going to get this. Like this, it's like taking a shadow, right? If you if you shone a light from over here, what kind of shadow would you get on um, on the on the y coordinates? Um, I mean, on, really, you need to do it over here because you, know, you might miss this thing, um, right? Over here, like, what kind of shadow do you get? Well, you're gonna get you're gonna get this up here. You're gonna get this over here. Okay. <coughs> okay. I think that's 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 enough. That's it for the moment.